Hi everyone. So in this video, we discuss a very interesting view <clears throat> or perspective of convolution and uh, uh, and pooling. So by convolution, we mean the operation that's taking place in the convolutional kernels. And then by pooling, we mean the pooling operation. So the first and third stages of a convolutional layer. And basically, this view is viewing them as priors. So let's discuss what prior means. Prior means that before learning begins, right? So when you learn, right, you are learning the probability, let's say, of y, the output given x, the input, right? A prior is a prior probability that you have of uh, over the output before the learning begins. So it could be reflected, for example, in the marginal distribution probability of y in general, right? So, um, so when we create a model, right, we incorporate our belief on how the prior distribution of the uh, function representing the data should look like, right? Before seeing the data and before training, before the learning begins, right, this represents the prior belief on how uh, on how the uh, the function that represents the data should look like. So this prior could be weak and could be strong. And basically a weak prior is uh, represented by a distribution that has high entropy. So what does entropy mean? And this is uh, uh, in, in a very general sense. But if you want to read uh, more concretely, you could read about what Shannon entropy, for example, is. A distribution that has high entropy is a distribution whose realization, and this is, I will talk in very uh, general, high level intuition kind of thing uh, 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 terms. So a, a distribution that has high entropy is one where the realization of the distribution tells you a lot of information, right? So for example, if there are two football teams uh, that are uh, equally, uh, like they are very competitive to each other, that game between these two teams has high entropy. Because the realization given by the outcome of the match tells you a lot of information. But if there are two football teams where one is very strong and the other is very weak, the outcome of this game has very low, ent has low entropy, right? Meaning that the outcome doesn't tell me a lot of information typically, right? Of course, it will, it will be surprising if the weak team wins, but typically, Right. So when we talk about distributions, we are talking about likelihood or statistics or average. Right. So typically the outcome will have will tell me uh, very little information because the strong team will win. And this is what we expected in the first place. Right. To be more specific, a little bit more specific. So, for example, take a Gaussian distribution. Right. If that distribution has high variance, the higher the variance, that means this distribution has high entropy. Right, because high variance means it could exhibit a lot. There are many values, a, a large range of values that are likely or have significant probability. If it if it's concentrated, has low variance, right? Then uh, then it has low entropy. Okay. Now let's take the extreme case because actually convolution and pooling uh, lie uh, are very extreme methods in terms of imposing uh, priors. So the extreme case is what? Let's say I have a two-dimensional space, right? If my prior lies on a line, right? Then that prior, so let's say I have a, a two-dimensional uh, uh, probability space. If my prior lies on a single line, that line has a zero, what's called Lebesgue measure in the two-dimensional space. And what it means that it has a zero Lebesgue measure is that for any joint distribution that is continuous, right? Or uh, we can say it in more uh, specific terms, if there is a joint PDF in the two dimensional space, that line would have had a zero probability of happening, right? So think of a simpler case. Let's say I'm on the real line and I have a, a continuous distribution. The probability of any specific point right is zero right so if i generalize that concept let's say i have million parameters in my neural network right or million possible parameters if the network had fully connected layers 
if I restrict my prior distribution to a space whose dimension is less than 1 million, then I am imposing an infinitely strong prior, right? Because this is a zero Lebesgue measure uh, set in the space, right? Or this is a zero probability space if I were to have a full continuous uh, distribution or a full joint PDF in the large space. And this is what convolution and pooling are doing, right? Because I am restricting a large set of parameters to be exactly zero. And the rest of the parameters, I take them, uh, I, I, I allow them to exhibit general values. So these parameters, right? So in fact, if I have, uh, if I have like uh, uh, 1000 units in, in my input layer, then when I have a kernel of size five, right? I am imposing a restriction on 995 weight parameters for every output unit to be zero. And I'm allowing only five parameters to be non-zero. So in total, it's the total number of output units times 995. This is the number of parameters I am imposing a restriction to be zero, right? So they are actually very strong priors, convolutional layers impose very strong priors. Now, from, a le from the machine learning perspective, when I impose a very strong prior, this could improve generalization by a lot if I am correct and could hurt me by a lot if I am incorrect. So think of it as taking a large risk, right? And that's why you need a lot of trial and error by machine learning engineers to find the right convolutional neural network architecture, right? Because these networks are really custom tailored towards the application because of their generalization ability so they allow it's as if i am making the network cheat right i am telling it a lot of prior information about the task before it even sees the training data right and this is what happens through the trial and error phase of testing what's the right architecture to come right and this is actually part of the challenge of why it's so difficult uh, to find an automatic way of finding the appropriate architecture because these architectures are really fine-tuned to the nature of applic the application because the architecture itself encodes within it within it a lot of prior information about the task at hand Right? Because if I get a, a wrong architecture, and this is also part of the reason why we can optimize this very deep and thin neural networks versus the shallow and wide neural networks, uh, because there is a lot of generalization mechanisms, uh, very strong generalization mechanisms that are integrated and incorporated in the design of these networks. Right? But that also gives you the risk of underfitting, right? Not even being able to fit to the training data. And that happens when you have the wrong architecture, right? So in summary, this view of convolution and pooling as imposing infinitely strong priors make us appreciate the successes and failures of conv uh, uh, convolutional neural networks and make us appreciate the risk taken when designing a, a generic convolutional neural network architecture and why a lot of engineering effort is needed uh, to find the right architecture for every application. Thank you.